How did you actually tell your parents? I think I kind of was beating around the bush saying, you know, that I've changed recently and I don't know if you've noticed that I've done this and that and I think they were kind of like, oh, just spit it out. Do you think they thought you were going to say you were gay or something? Exactly. <laughs> God, you're not Muslim. <laughs> we thought you were going to say you were Muslim then. <laughs> Actually, I am. What is it that makes a woman, with all the freedom and opportunities of modern Britain, choose to become a Muslim? It's a few weeks before September the 11th, and like most people, I know very little about Islam. I'm finding that women are reluctant to talk openly about their conversion, but then a friend puts me in touch with Caroline. No, you're right, come in. She's nervous, but eventually agrees to be filmed in the privacy of her home. Were you searching for some kind of meaning? I think, yeah, but then I think if any human being doesn't ever question why they're here, then they're, I think there's something wrong in that. And even though one part of me was saying it might upset people if I did this, I mean, I got to the stage in the, the, in the January three years ago where I just, I thought, I have, I have to follow this, this is the right way. I like to identify myself as a Muslim. I do feel disappointed with myself if I do go out, you know, like this. But I do think I really should be covering my head. So why don't you wear a scarf? I guess it is just worrying about people's reactions. And I know that that is an excuse. It's not a reason, it's, it is an excuse. I, I'm worried, I think, oh, if I'm going to work, I'll this headscarf on, people will treat me differently, people will think I'm strange, people will think I'm foreign. I wish I did have the strength to do it, and I'm hoping that in the next few months I will do. In the next few months? I hope so. But then I did say, oh, when I start work, I'm going to put the headscarf on, it's not going to come off. And, I, and then I bottled out. Can we see what you look like with your headscarf on? If you like. <laughs> can we? Yeah. So can you, like, use anything, or are there specific hijab things? Someone that I know said that you can tell where someone comes from according to what their scarf's like, but... So I don't know what people, where people think I come from. Look in the mirror, because I get it wonky. Like that. Make sure, like, my head's... My, that's covered there. I feel, in a way, like I'm leading a double life, because people don't know I'm Muslim. I know it sounds terribly exciting. It's not that exciting, but... It does feel a bit deceptive, because I believe what I'm following is the truth, so I want to be honest about it, but then that's my weakness. You look like a Muslim now. I am. <laughs> I'm surprised how a simple headscarf can so radically transform somebody. And I suppose it's just this sort of reaction that's making it so difficult for Caroline and the others to be more public about their conversion. I leave Caroline and go in search of other converts, but then everything changes. Wendy Middleton with a news flash on Hallam FM. Two planes have crashed into the World Trade Center towers in New York. At least one of the planes had been hijacked. It's thought hundreds of people may have been killed in the explosions which took place... News all over the world is now dominated by terrorism and Islam. And with a lot of people thinking they're the same thing, white Muslims in the UK are not rushing to be in the film. I head off to Sheffield, apparently the convert capital of Britain, where I meet a coach driver called Amina. OK, I'll go and get me a checklist and we'll go and find our bus and I'll check it over. Amina converted as a teenager and later married a Sheffield Yemeni. Now she acts as a kind of big sister to other white girls interested in Islam. Do you know quite a lot of women who are converting? Since I became Muslim like 10 years ago, there's been so many, maybe 50 or so that I know of personally. Morning. This is Bryn, my co-driver for the day. Kind of unusual job for a Muslim woman. It certainly is, yeah. I think I'm the only one. How's that? Bit, bit more out, out, please. Cheers. There's such a taboo, isn't there, about Muslim women. We are considered as being such poor creatures who are so oppressed and not allowed to go out of the house. We have to walk 25 paces behind our husband. I walk in front of mine. <laughs> right, are we ready? Miss Sam is allowing me to drive a 12-ton coach down the motorway. Even a lot of English men wouldn't want their wives to do the job that I'm doing. 
Someone's got a good rock on it, hasn't it? Yeah, they're not bad, they usually. Fantastic. Well impressed. I leave Amina to drive down the M1. She says she'll help me find other white Muslims to talk to. I hope she has more luck than me. Three women have dropped out of the film so far. It's not just September the 11th. There are problems closer to home. Hi, Samina, you all right? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. I've lost my voice at the moment. <laughs> you have to what? I didn't think you would. Why don't I? All right, so you're not going to then? Uh, OK, then, it doesn't matter. It's all right, it doesn't matter. What reasons has he given for not wanting you to do it? Does his family not know about you? Oh, that's probably why, then. He probably doesn't want to advertise the fact that he's committing haram on national television, does he? <laughs> anyway, love it, it doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. I'll speak to you soon, yeah? OK, bye. Boyfriend don't want us to do it. His family don't know about us, so um, don't think they'd be dead impressed. See, this is the thing we're going to come up against so much. She asked him like, if it was because of all the trouble that's gone off, you know, with this um, bombing and everything. He said no. So it's obvious that the only other reason is that he doesn't want to want his family to find out that he's seeing somebody openly. There's nobody else I can think of. Ahmed, is there anyone who you can think of? Any of your mates who have got English girlfriends who are thinking about becoming Muslim? Did you try over? I've tried everybody. So, boyfriends seem to have a problem with it, don't they? Muslim men are seeing white girls. Yeah, well, Muslim men see English girls and Islamically, it's not acceptable to have a relationship out of marriage unless you're considering somebody for marriage in a non-physical relationship way, which obviously those relationships aren't that type of relationship. Um, so obviously they don't want their families to find out because it causes a lot of trouble. Not all Muslim lads going out with white girls are so guarded. Amina's husband, Ahmed, puts me in touch with his friend, Hussein, whose girlfriend's thinking about converting. Thank you, bye. Who's that in your house? Van Lede. Are you girlfriend? No, she's not in my girlfriend. She's out. <laughs> she's the Tell what? me a bit about your girlfriend. Do you want to know about my girlfriend? Why do you think it's important for her to become a Muslim? All her sister, why are you think of becoming a Muslim? And she said, no problem, but she just want to know more about it. I'll read about it, and so I got her some books from Amina. And she still read them. I just hope that she one day when she'll come to me and says, yeah, I'm ready for it. But I'm not forcing her into it. But in Islam, you're not supposed to be going out with any girl, are you? True, it's forbidden to go with any girl. It doesn't have to be a white girl. But you just live with that and do wrong. I just live and do wrong. It's pretty tough, though, for a kind of Muslim guy living in this country to abide by that rule, isn't it? It is tough. That's what I'm saying, it's tough. Because when you go out there, if you're driving or walking past and there's all the half-naked female you see in town or mother hall and that, it's forbidden. You look because you can't help but look, you get me? But at the same time, it's forbidden to look. And if you can't really help yourself, that's it. You're doing the wrong thing all the time. But majority do do it. The majority of Muslim lads? Yeah, lads, yeah. The majority of Muslim lads do do it. Some of them probably behind closed curtains, undercover, but they still do it. Hussein's girlfriend, like the others, doesn't want to go on camera. But in the meantime, Amina's come up trumps. She arranges to meet up with Amy, a student from Wales who doesn't have a Muslim boyfriend. Well, they're Pleased to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> it's Amy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, I'm Amina. So, how long have you been Muslim? Four weeks. Oh, <laughs> right, new. Oh, that is I so know. scary. Yeah, so it's all a bit sort of oh, scary. Everything's really new. Yeah, oh it's like. What do your family think about it? They don't know yet. That's the next scary bit. Oh. What are they like? What kind of background are you coming from? Um, where I live at home, no Muslims at all. Nothing, just white people. Yeah. You know, the media gives them, yeah. you know, viewpoint they say. That's, that's the problem, isn't it? It's horrible. I hate it. So, how do you think they're going to react? I think, think they'll be all right. Maybe it's going to be better than my dad, I think. Yeah. Um, but my dad, I think he's going to be more concerned, like I'm being forced into it or something. Yeah, my, you know? mine was similar. They thought of, like, yeah. oh, well. You're being oppressed. Yeah. Why would you give up your Western free lifestyle exactly. for this? <laughs> and it's going to be really hard because I'm, I don't know whether to wear my scarf or not. I'm like, oh, I don't know. So yeah. when I told my parents, mm. 
I just did it in a very subtle way. Mm. I think if you're gentle with them and you sort of put the primer on first, as it were, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like prime it before you put the top coat on. <laughs> You know. Every Muslim, basically, that I know is born into a Muslim family, whatever. Mm. And, you know, it's really nice meeting Revis. We're a species of our own, aren't we, love? It's fantastic. <laughs> we get the best of both worlds. So what about marriage? Is there any marriage on the horizon? Um, not at the moment. Nobody in mind. <laughs> I have had some offers. Oh, you've had some offers? Yeah, but... Um, that doesn't surprise me at all. I, not, no, not yet. Please. You do it like, when you're ready, love. Yeah. <laughs> How old are you? You're on a young one. I'm 19. Oh, well then. I've got plenty of time. Plenty of time, <laughs> love. I. I'm really excited about this weekend as well because it's like my first time fasting and I'm like, yay! Oh, yeah, it's your first drama yeah. then, isn't it? At what time is it? It must be nearly time for Mogadou. Yeah. Oh, we better go and pray then, aren't we? we could, should we just pray here? Yeah, or do you want to get down that little bit down there? See which direction we are. Yeah. You know, to stand close together, don't you? Yeah. Allah Akbar Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Zirat al-Ladina an-amta alayhim Ghayr al-Maktubi alayhim Mulat-Tali We're going to go to the top stories this hour. Within the last few minutes, it's been confirmed the US has launched airstrikes on Afghanistan. The eastern town of Jalalabad has also been the target of US raids. The Taliban have responded with anti-aircraft fire. Allah Akbar Stories this hour. The US now dominates Afghan airspace after almost a week of fighting. In other news, the Home Secretary David Blunkett says he utterly condemns attacks on Muslims in Britain. It's only four weeks since Amy became a Muslim. And as the bombing continues, I can't help thinking she couldn't have picked a worse time to convert. I want to know how she got into Islam. I never really believed in God. I had um, a few friends who are Muslims and uh, I asked them for books so I could respect what they believed. And the more I learned, the more it was like common sense to me. So I just decided to convert to Islam and I'm happy. What well, was hard? Walking into university with my hijab on the first day, that was hard because everybody was like, what's she done, what's she done? But yeah, because some of my friends did know about my um, interest in Islam, but not all of them. And that was quite interesting. And how did you cope with it? I just carried on as normal. I haven't changed. I'm still Amy. What about your parents? I haven't told them yet, but I'm going to tell them soon, inshallah. Um, I think they'll be okay. It might be a bit of a shock to see me wearing a scarf to start off with, but after that, I think they'll be all right. Have you seen any of your family since you've become a Muslim? I saw my brother the week after and he came to visit me and I took my scarf off then. I've got to admit, yeah, okay. Might have not been good, but you I took, did, your scarf I took off. my scarf off while he came to see me. Um, it was only for a few hours, but I felt I wasn't ready to tell him. As long as what's in my heart is right, then that's what matters, really. I think as soon as I see that I've not changed, I'll be all right. I hope. <laughs> Please, Mum. As a new Muslim, Amy's had to change her whole lifestyle, and that includes her wardrobe. So where are we going, Amy? We're going to Tyrak to look for some scarves. Usually I can find some I really like. Oh, we're going down here, aren't we? Most like people black. wear the sort of black ones, don't yeah. they? I find them too boring. So are there sort of rules about what you can and can't wear? Um, see-through ones are not a good idea because they're like obviously showing your hair. I can't wear that because you can That's see straight really through nice. it. But it's really pretty. It's just a shame. But... And you're not allowed pictures either, like of animals, like dogs. No, no, no. <laughs> Do people comment on them? Um, sometimes some comments I've had. It's like, oh, it's too bright. It makes it really pale. Blah blah blah. But that's, I think it's only people who can't like, actually handle the fact that I am Muslim and I'm white as well. Do you think that's harder for people to accept? Well, being white and Muslim, I think so. Right. Here we go. Have you got a mirror? Yes, it's just one on the Thanks. door. Oh, is that your trick? This is the trick. See, that looks quite nice, don't you think? Yeah, I do. I like this colour, it's nice. And how did you decide what style to wear? I just copied my friends. 
Because I find like, you know, some people they put a pin there and then they take that bit up there like that. I can't do that, it's too complicated. This so what do you do? I just put a pin, like a safety pin. Did you worry about looking nice? No, I don't care how I look. <laughs> don't you? <laughs> no. Can I have these, please? Thank you. Top stories at three. A passenger plane has crashed in New York in the residential Queens area of the city. Prime Minister Tony Blair has spoken to say it's too early to tell whether it was a tragic accident or related to terrorism. Hiya. 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 Hiya.
It's one thing to disapprove of adultery and promiscuity, but do Amina and Ahmed go along with the punishment? What crimes would Islamic law punish by public execution? Murder, um, obviously. Um, treason is one of them. Um, adultery. Adultery, you get punished by death. Yeah. If you it's think proven. that's right. If it's yeah. proven. You know, if, if, if God has given a law, then that's for a good yeah. reason. If you look at what's behind the Sharia law, um, and you can see that it's actually very logical and very sensible. But you think for someone to just commit adultery, they should die? Yeah, but just commit adultery. Have a, fair enough, just the act of committing adultery is not mm. a big act, yeah? But if you think of the implications behind yes. the act of adultery that is so detrimental to society, yeah? It, it breaks up a family, society. it can affect the emotions of the children for life. It's like a, don't a knockdown Don't you think it would effect. affect the emotions of the children to see their mother murdered and, or you, executed? It, when they grow up, they will know that their mother, yeah, she was a nice person, but she did something wrong. It's not, it's not allowed in Islam, that. Like, Islam is really detailed on everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah near enough, yeah. The big things has been sorted. Does it tell clear. you, like, you know, what's sexually OK and not OK? Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's very clear on yeah, that. So very what does clear. it say you can do and what can't you do? How do you mean? Like, between husband and wife? Yeah. Well, they, they can do anything. They can bar... do part from, you know, one place that the man shouldn't go there. I've got you. I'll get you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but apart from that, everything else is OK. Yeah, as long as it's reasonable. <laughs> Yeah. As long as it's reasonable. Yeah. So does, it, does it go into that specific? Like, what's it no, say? Obviously, yeah. to the extent of you, you disrespect your partner. So anything that's consensual? Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Apart from that particular... Place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Northern Alliance have captured the Afghan capital of Kabul after the Taliban fled the city. The United States has ruled out any pause in the military campaign in Afghanistan during the holy month of Ramadan. Further bombing raids are to be made against frontline Taliban positions. Specialist US forces. It's Amy's first Ramadan, the month when Muslims fast between sunrise and sunset. Every evening she meets with the University Islamic Society to pray and then break her fast. Lots. As prayers get underway, we have a problem. Just like in a mosque, men and women are strictly segregated. So with men on our crew, we're not able to film Amy praying. Have you asked some of the sisters, have they said no? They weren't happy with the oh, guys going yeah. in the sister's area. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't yeah, yeah, about yeah. what we were filming. Yeah, you can't do that either. Oh, Could we pull the curtain aside and film from this side, just to show of Amy? Just to show of Amy, yeah, I think we can... I mean, the thing is, you go to lectures, everywhere you go, you have to mingle with men. But as soon as you come to the prayer room, everybody goes, oh, no, got to keep separate, got to keep separate. So what do you do? Do you find the logic of that aspect of the religion quite hard? I think, I think no, I don't find it hard. I think it's um, quite good in a way, because it stops you doing, like, going and getting too close to men and, like, go and have sex and stuff like that, because it leads to that, you get close to a guy. I mean, I've been there. I get, you get friends with a guy, you start talking to him, get closer, closer, and you just end up, you know, doing something. And as, like, you know, fornication is not allowed in Islam, then, you know, it's a good thing. <laughs> so you're not going to have sex between now and when marriage? Married, no. Does that make you want to get married quicker? No. But it would be nice. <laughs> A few days later, Amina calls with some startling news. She's emigrating to the Yemen, which right now is on the watch list in the war against terrorism. The Foreign Office is strongly advising Britons not to travel there. We've decided to take our chances over there, as it were. We're going to try and get a job over there and what have you. So. There's so much um, hatred for Muslims at the moment in Britain. Um, but I'm not bothered for myself, but my kids, you know. Just in case, you just don't know, do you? What's going to happen? I suppose in all religions, converts are notoriously zealous. And for all the white Muslim women I've met so far, the rules and regulations of Islam seem to be the dominant issue. But I'd heard about the Sufis, 
a branch of Islam which emphasizes spirituality over rules. Nice to see you. Oh, yeah. oh, do you come in? Do Thank you. Come you. In. Before converting to Sufi Islam a year ago, Jam was a Christian. She separated from her husband and has two sons who've now left home. I'm going to the zikr tonight, so I'm looking forward to it. So I said I'd do the food tonight as I was at home. A zikr is a lovely remembrance service where you just say the names of Allah and then eat afterwards. It's like a sort of prayer meeting. Yes, yes, it is really. Some friends have said that you were a good Christian, so why have you um, sold out? Almost is what what they would imply. And I think my answer to that is, well, I didn't know about the prophet. And indeed in the Bible, Jesus actually does say, somebody will come after me. So I think for me, it hasn't been at all a sellout of my faith. It's been an enriching of my faith. Mm. Nearly broke my fast then, did you notice? No. <laughs> but I didn't. What did you do? Well, I've got some garlic on my thing and I was just about to <laughs> lick it up. But I didn't. There is a lot of rule following, isn't there? Yes. Um, Do you like that? I have no problem at all praying. Because it brings you in God's presence five times a day. What hampers me is um, fearing I'm going to put a foot wrong with the culture. You know, like if I can't pronounce this properly, if I'm not wearing the right clothes, if I'm not behaving appropriately. As all my friends say, it doesn't mean you have to get all sort of scarved up and walk about, um, you know, like with um, a bed sheet on you and who's going to see you just with your eyes. And I said, no, it isn't like that, you know, because that's cultural, isn't it, to separate the cultural uh, from what the face is saying. The face is saying to dress modestly and to cover yourself appropriately and to not, um, not dress in a way that is provocative. Cultures interpret that differently, don't they, as we've seen in Afghanistan and various places like that. But do you do things like shake men's hands and yes. be in a room with a man and yes. all of that intermixing? Yes. I can't see myself making that shift very easily because I'm an English woman and I, I see men and women. Men and women come to my house, I see men and women at work. If it is in the Quran that you shouldn't be in the same room as a man on your own who's not family, then... I feel the way that I deal with that for myself is what your intention is. I just find it really difficult. I, I really do, and I think that... And I'm still struggling with many aspects of that, and I can't deny it, really. There are issues about the whole thing that you're meant to question, but you can't just go around sort of thinking, well, this is what I think, you know, and it's not fair for women. I think, you know, like looking at what I was like in the 70s to how I am now, like my mum and my sister and I went to Greenham Common. I had um, orange hair that was like a quarter of an inch all over. I used to wear dungarees. <laughs> I never burnt my bra. I never did anything like that. I didn't go to that. I thought, what was this about? Um, but I was kind of, I was a right-on feminist in those days, really. And it was essential. I mean, it wasn't until, what, the 60s that we could own our own property in England. We could have a bank account without a husband having to sign the cheque. Islamic women have always had those rights. If I stick to what the Quran says to me and what the message is, it's very clear to me that I have total equality. Just do as it says, and nobody can argue with me on that. It's Friday lunchtime, Jumma prayer, and a more traditional scene at the Yemeni mosque. In a few days, Ahmed, Amina and their two young children leave Sheffield. I meet Ahmed to talk about what life in the Yemen will be like for his English wife. Revets, when they go to Arab country, they will be treated very, very highly. Like this person left the West way of life the freedom, whatever they name it. To become a Muslim, to wear a hijab, that's a big thing for a woman. When they see like one like Amina, they treat her with really high respect. Is it different, though, being married to a white Muslim? I've been long enough in this country to know the mentality of the women in this country, obviously. So, so I knew what I was getting into. I was prepared to. You were prepared for Amina? Yeah, yeah. She is, she is a strong person, she is, she's got a very strong personality. But I was preparing to her, I know how she thinks, I know how, the way she is. Who wears the trousers in your house? The house is her kingdom, that I leave everything in the house to her. Sometimes she gets overexcited and then I'll have to take control then. Oh, Ahmed! Well, I can't find you. Oh, yeah. 
you big turd? Wait a minute. Today, I mean, I'll be nice. Oh, shut up. Everything's packed. Here. Thanks. When I bought her to do this work. Is it to the door? To Yemen? Two doors. Have you got your burqa in there? Niqab, yeah. Look, it's here. Oh, that's lucky. Do you wear that the whole time? When there's like a lot of men around and I don't feel comfortable, like um, some of the markets in Yemen get very, very busy with blokes. With me being English, I am taller and I am a lot whiter than most Arab women. I've got blue eyes. In the Arab countries, they find this very attractive. So, to save myself any type of hassle. God, didn't you walk around like that? Yeah. It's all right. You can see and everything. It's not a problem. I've, I drive with it on. You don't? Yeah. You can see perfectly well. It's like having black windows on your car. And then if you want to see, you know, more, you just lift it. Thank you. Like that. You look like a tent. Cheers. <laughs> don't you mind that? No. I'd rather be seen as a chaste, modest woman than a slapper, to be honest. I mean, obviously, a bloke in the street isn't going to fancy me over fancying somebody with a short skirt and a good pair of legs. I mean, there's two blokes here. Would you guys find me attractive in this lot? Or would you rather look at a woman in a miniskirt? You can answer, Mr Soundman. I think that was in no. No, exactly, so you don't find me attractive. Which is good. Mm. That's the idea. Later, I meet Jan at the Sufi Centre for the Zikr, where men and women pray together. <laughs> but the first time I went, I went on my own to the Sufi Centre. I didn't know what to do, whether I wore a scarf, how you behaved, where you sat, um, what you did. And I asked, and um, the person that ran the centre said, it doesn't matter, don't worry about that, you know, you aren't here to worry about a scarf. That stays with me too, sort of comments like that. It didn't seem dogmatic. It didn't seem you will do this, you won't do that. So it didn't seem as exclusive. So there seemed like a way in for me, really. Here, Looking at the Quran, it's the perfect way of life for me. If I keep on the clear message it's giving me, and it's very simple to love people, to care for people. And the diamond, and the take home message is both these complexes have very different DD transition intensities. We come to the end. Oh. <laughs> it's the end of university term for Amy, and her parents are picking her up. They still don't know she's a Muslim, but she's decided that today she'll break the news. Well, my parents are coming down here, like four o'clock, to see me. I am really stressing. And then I told you if your granddad's coming. No, they said my dad said, oh, um, I might be granddad, so if my granddad's coming, I don't know if I should tell them or not. Do you think they're going to be kind of shocked about it then? Or? Um, I phoned my brother last night, right? Yeah. And I was like, Dave, can I tell you something? I was crying my eyes out. <laughs> my brother's great, though. And he's like, yeah, it's cool, yeah, cool, don't worry about it. I'm just, like, scared they're going to ask, like, really awkward questions. Um, you got to, like, tell them not to get your Christmas presents, though. No, because I just take them as random 25th of December presents, because that's what I'm giving now. I've got Christmas presents for them as well. So you don't mind if we buy you Christmas presents? No, you're quite welcome. <laughs> Should be alright though. I hope. The longer I know Amy, the harder it is to imagine her without her headscarf. I want to see the girl her parents expect to see. She invites me round to her flat to show me photos of the old Amy. Hiya. Hi. Come in. I like your slippers. Yeah. <laughs> this is my room. Is it in here? Oh, this is a good one. This is probably about four, yeah, four years ago. <laughs> you <aren't> she? Fifteen. <laughs> Don't you miss going clubbing? Yeah, but I just put my radio on and do it in my room. Is it not allowed to go clubbing? It's not allowed to be in places where there's alcohol and guys are, like, on the pool and not a good atmosphere. This is the guy I used to fancy. It's a very well-handled person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know why I've still got it, actually. I don't go for blondes anymore. Huh? No blondes, thank you. Thank you. Did he used to have boyfriends? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you miss that? No. Well, in a way, I miss the hugs, yeah, but that's it. But I get my hugs off my mates. I'll have that all when I get married anyway, won't I? Mm. <laughs> this is when I went out for my birthday. That was the start of May. Are there quite a lot of people back in your hometown who don't know you're a Muslim? Yeah. Yeah, loads of them. So it's quite a big time for you now, really, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> have you been worrying? A bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. A bit, a lot. <laughs> yeah, about them coming, but it'll be all right. It'll work out. I'm sure it will. I'm a bit scared. Are you? Yeah. It'll be all right. I wish they'd phone me, actually, tell me they're on their way. Oh, they're going to be here in, like, half an hour, so... Understandably, Amy wants to tell her parents in private. We agree to meet again when everyone's had time to think it through. Good luck. OK. I left Amy with one of the most difficult tasks converts are faced with, breaking the news to their parents. A week later I go to Amy's hometown in Wales to find out how it went. Her mum didn't want to talk about it, but her dad and brother agreed to meet me for a drink. Point of IPA please and lemonade. But it was my wife who told me. They went shopping, so I went for a walk and when I got back to Amy's flat she told me, you know. Thank you. Well, I was a bit shocked to start with, but then, you know, when you What did said, your wife say to you? Um, I think Andrew was a little embarrassed walking around Sainsbury's with her, with her, with Amy, wasn't she? Mm. She was, yeah, to be fair. Because Amy had a scarf on? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's probably the one that's took it the worst, worst. out of the family. She's always believed for women to be sort of independent and she's always sort of, you know, tried to teach my sister that and then, you know, without the understanding, just thinking that women are the ones that have got to stay at home and that is a bit of a, a bit of a shock in that way. I think it was the covering her head that really upset her the most, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Why is that hard for us? I, I don't understand it personally. The way my sister's explained it, it's like, you know, to wear the headscarf is to sort of keep you special for your sort of loved one. But I, I can't ever, I don't understand why a headscarf keeps you special in any way. What about when you first saw her with the scarf? It didn't bother me much at all. Mm. No, it didn't, no. She gave me a few books to read. I haven't read them all, I've only read a little bit. But I can see, you know, yeah, why she's done it, yeah. I mean, I think she's, because um, it's a complete way of life, isn't it, she's doing. And she seems very happy with just that complete way of life. Do you think there was a side of her that was kind of like, didn't feel like she fitted in and so was looking for a different path? Yeah, you know, she never wanted to go out and, you know, get drunk and go to nightclubs and all that like, like her friends did, you know? And in that way then she never sort of fitted in, you know? And now she does because she's got people around her that, that sort of do the same thing as she does, you know? I suppose living in Pembrokeshire was a bit of a... A square peg in a round hole, wouldn't she? She yeah. comes across as a lot happier now than what she did when she was in school. Yeah. Yeah, she does, yeah. yeah. Islam answers a lot of questions that the social way of life around here doesn't answer for me. Everybody does the same thing. They just kind of go to the pub, get drunk, go clubbing, get drunk, go to the rugby, get drunk. That's what they do. I didn't want to go out to the pub, I didn't want to go and have, like, so much to drink that I couldn't remember what I was doing. And that's when people started to find me a bit strange. And I started not to get along with people around here, really. And that's quite scary, because you think I'm alone. I'm the only person around here who's like this. It's reported the Taliban hold on Afghanistan has weakened even further. British troops are on standby to go into the country as a peacekeeping force. It's the end of Ramadan and Jan calls. She's made a major decision. Despite her more liberal interpretation of the rules of Islam, she's decided to wear the hijab. It's Monday morning and she's got to go to work. How are you feeling about it? <laughs> And well, I was, it was, I was just upstairs in the bathroom and, uh, um, <sighs> yeah, I feel quite emotional, really. 
Why are you going to start wearing the scarf? To wear a scarf for me as an English woman in Islam is a real statement. And I really feel I want to do it. And it just feels the right time to do it. I think what makes me feel a little upset is, um, I think, I'm moving on, isn't it, really? Because um, people have known, some of them, my friends at work, know that I've been looking at this faith. But to actually go today with a scarf feels quite, um, quite a journey, really, I suppose. I'll be all right in a minute. I will compose myself. Have you thought hard about what scarf you're going to wear? Yes, I did. I did. I've seen a lot of people wearing scarves in different ways. And um, I think I quite like this way and it seems acceptable and doesn't feel too, too covering for starters, for beginners. What I'll be like in five years <laughs> or whatever. Also, I'll put a top on too because I put a space to pray like this. So you wouldn't go out in that T-shirt then? No. Did you used to? Yes. It's amazing how you sort of change, isn't it? As I look over my clothes now, I think oh, that's probably not appropriate to wear. Uh, what have you got in there now that you wouldn't wear? Uh, this is a, quite a favourite skirt of mine, actually. I really like this skirt. But it's got slits at the side, you know? You do have to sort of think about... about your clothes more. Uh, you see, that skirt I couldn't wear anymore, as... cos it's, you know, it's quite tight too. This is a bit short. I don't know. A bit figure-hugging too, isn't it? Mm. You see, you've got to be so careful. That would show your bum, wouldn't it? Show your bum. Mm. I quite like bright scarves and I quite like flowery ones too. I wondered if that was partly the hippie in me that was. Flower power and all that. Make love, not war. It's still the same today, isn't it? Show love. Mm. Um, and not make love anymore. Not You're not supposed to do that, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yes, I think, I think, interestingly, you know, the Prophet didn't deny it, did he? I mean, the Prophet didn't sort of object to that, did he? Uh, in fact, one, somebody once said to me the Prophet was a whole man, you know, unlike Jesus, who you don't know what he was up to, and, you know, the people, <laughs> you don't know what he did or what he didn't do, because um, you haven't, you don't know what his life was about. I don't think that I'll go today with any expectations of myself. I'll just get on with my working day. But I think from now on, I will begin to slowly but surely be more Islamic in the way I am, really. It feels like I've had the apprenticeship this year and it's been a difficult year. I actually feel quite ill-prepared today. <laughs> Emotions are running high in Amina and Ahmed's house too. In just a few hours, the family are leaving Sheffield for a new life in the Yemen. Bye, Mom. Bye. Oh, to this. <sighs> There's still lots to do, but no shortage of help. That's the car keys. Okay. They're for Tracy. The TV in that bedroom. Yeah. Give it to Bakil. Oh, and also, Abdul Malik, in the back of the car is a computer. It needs to be dropped off at YL and Leila's house. <laughs> OK. Yeah, OK. You get all this? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people I know who have become Muslim, one of the things that's drawn them to Islam is the strength and the bond between the Muslims. I don't think I would have had that type of quality of relationship with my friends before. How are you feeling, Jennifer? Upset. Sad. Just leaving us, I'll probably cry before she goes. We're always there for each other. Whenever somebody needs something, like for instance, someone's had a baby, the rest of us will be there sort of helping out and um, cooking meals and making sure that they're okay. But that's Islam, it brings people together. Ahmad, Abdul Hamid's here. Can we get a shower? Yeah. We have got time. Yeah, we have. We've got to go now. Okay. Yes, darling. Can I take the back up as well? Yeah, please. Our car's here. Any strong men in the house, please? Right, that case can go downstairs. I hope I haven't forgotten anything. Mina. Yeah. Hi, Mina. 
aftershave. Ahmed, I don't know where it is, love. Don't be awkward. What was in the bag? You should have thought that I'll need it. It's got nothing to do with me. It's it. Ahmed, it's an aftershave, for crying out loud. It's from Harrods. Ooh! Ew. What about my hair? Where's the gel? Packed. Obviously, it's packed. So I'll, I'll carry it up. Thanks, shall I, love? Yeah. Where am I meant to put this? That's it. May Allah protect it, inshallah. Have we got everything? Jazakallah <laughs> khair. <laughs> oh, I'll miss you too. She'll be back soon, hopefully. <laughs> Jan arrives at the Northern General Hospital, where she works as a counsellor. I feel quite nervous, actually. It's the first day of her new life wearing hijab. This is where I work, Sheffield Kidney Institute. Morning. There isn't anything for me, is there? Liz Lidget. Liz Lidget? Yeah, okay. If you were All right, guys, I'll catch you later. Bye. They didn't say anything. Do you think that's what happened they're going to react? I think that might be what will happen. That I just kind of think, what's that about then? A little bit more, I feel more composed then. Doors opening. Morning. Are you okay? I'm fine! <laughs> Hi! Nice to what's see this? you. What's this? I know. Get in here, we'll, we'll discuss. This is a statement. Um, yes, it yes. probably is, isn't it, really? It's probably uh, a move forward, really. It's Quite cool. Do you think it looks okay? <laughs> I know. People... To the blonde hair. I know. <laughs> and how have you found it this morning? This morning it's felt okay. Oh. I was very shaky at home because it just felt like um, it's a lot of explaining, isn't it? As well? Yeah. But lots of people know that the the way that your face's been going. Sure. I mean, you, you have been open and you've yes, talked about this. Yes. This is this, true. So. This is true. In the hospital, it's very secular. It doesn't recognise a god particularly. It's cause and effect, isn't it? got an illness, we cure it. We don't look at the soul. And a lot of problems that people have with emotional illness is there. And I think if you can help them spiritually, you don't have to say, become a Sufi, become a Muslim. This, but to try and help them, I feel, is what I want to do more now, really. And I do think, thank you, Allah, God, because I kind of think, blimey, I've got so many things to learn and to do. Could be sat in my twin set, couldn't I, somewhere? waiting for the grandchildren to come. If I can cope right now, I can stick with it. I mean, I know I've been through the hardest part so far, which is telling my parents, you know, going out with my hijab on, going out round home. I know that's, that's the hardest bit over and done with now. Nobody's forced me to do it. I've done it of my own free will. I'm a British Muslim. That's what I am. You know, I have my Islam and I have my British culture as well, you know. <laughs> Get on England, <laughs> Get on Britain. Click on screen for more videos of extraordinary humans.